really bummed out. Just got the news about uh, Big Daddy V, Viscera, Mabel, a.k.a. Nelson Frazier, real name. Just got that news a few minutes ago, right before I'm about to start recording this commentary. And, uh, you know, I guess I'm happy I got the news in time for me to, you know, put some thoughts on him in here. Uh, but at the same time, uh, very depressing, very sad. I uh, can't say that I'm all that surprised. You know, this is not... Uh, you know, this is a weight issue. I'm almost positive this has nothing to do with drugs or any sort of demons that a lot of wrestlers tend to have. Big Daddy V was a good guy. Monstrous son of a bitch. Absolutely monstrous. Humongous. You just flat out cannot be at that weight and live to be 50 years old. I don't know how old he was uh, upon his death. I'm going to guess early to mid 40s, something like that. But still, you know, he's five, 600 pounds. You just can't live a healthy life that way, period. I don't care who you are. You cannot be that big. It's a shame that Big Daddy V wasn't able to, I don't know, maybe take things more seriously, try to lose some weight. You know, you think of guys like Yokozuna, uh, who kind of had the same problem, who even went, uh, you know, to hospitals and universities trying to do things to lose the weight. And it's a shame that they were never able to, because it's what ultimately took both of their lives. You know, I cannot relate to somebody that has this weight problem. I'm sure that it's very, very difficult to lose the weight, especially when you're that large. You know, so I don't want to say, oh, if somebody's giant, they should just lose the weight so they can be healthier. I know it's a lot more complicated than that, and I cannot relate. But hey, that was his life. That was his gimmick. I mean, that was Mabel's gimmick was to be that large. I mean, he was as big, you know, as uh, Andre the Giant, or at least as heavy at one time anyway. So you kind of had to know going in that sometime between the ages of 40 and 50 that Big Daddy V was probably going to die of a heart attack, and that sounds like is exactly what has happened. And it definitely goes without saying that my thoughts are with the friends and family of Nelson Frazier, and I hope they are able to deal with this as best as possible. I remember when he came in, uh, when, when him and uh, Mo came in as men on a mission, this would have been 93-ish, you know, they were very much into that kind of lame type of, you know, bubblegum rap that was out at the time. I remember like, Whoop, There It Is, that fucking song like 20 years ago. They wore very bright, loud colors, you know, and Oscar was their rapper, you know, they were just a big giant tag team, and you know, in the WWE you really didn't have tag teams at that time, but men on the mission still really never made it to, you know, a dominant level of a road warriors or a demolition they were more for entertainment purposes and the wwe seemed like they were more interested in having the entire crowd throw their hands in the air and wave them like they just don't care uh than actually getting the fucking team over and of course as i've mentioned several times i believe my, most recently i answered it in one of my big q and a's you know but uh was not a fan of mabel's push uh that he got as a heel only because it seemed like it was rushed and it seemed like it had vince mcmahon written all over it even after the steroid trial even after trying to go in a different direction getting away from the big, large giants and, and focusing more on wrestling and in-ring ability and athletes. Uh, there was still something about big guys that Vince loved. That's why he put the belt on Diesel. And instead of Diesel having kick-ass feuds and matches with guys like Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, uh, he put him in the ring with fucking Mabel on SummerSlam. So, you know, nothing against, you know, Mr. Frazier, of course, you know, but uh, those matches were stupid, and I really didn't agree with, uh, with Mabel's push at the time, and it kind of killed him because as soon as uh, he... He turned heel, won the King of the Ring, got the title shot at SummerSlam. He was out of the WWE four months later. But it was cool to see him resurface, you know, a few times during the next, you know, 20 years. You know, he came back as Viscera as part of the corporate ministry. And even as recently as, what, 2007 or 2006, maybe, he was wrestling in the ECW uh, as Big Daddy V. And he was in and out a couple of times before then. So, you know, very sad death, something you never like to hear. Uh, we've dealt with so many deaths, uh, like I've said, and uh, like I've chronicled in every year that I've been on here doing commentaries, including uh, the big deceased wrestlers commentary that I did a couple of years ago. We've lost about 20 guys since then. So I, for one, am very sad to hear this news. I'm sure all of you are as well. It's never a pleasant thing when we hear about one of our boys going down like this, uh, and it's a shame, but, you know, at the same time, life moves on. And speaking of life moving on, we've got a pay-per-view this coming Sunday, but before we get into that pay-per-view, why don't we get into a little bit of the go-home raw? I don't want to talk much about the show because we all saw the show. It wasn't even that great of a show. There was just one thing that stood out above all else and you guys all know what it is it's John Cena versus Cesaro I said when the match was booked when they had the promo in the ring and they announced the match I tweeted the fact that John Cena is about to have a great match on Raw now I'm not going to get into too many comments here but if you think that John Cena cannot wrestle in the ring and then he does not know what he's doing and that he's a terrible entertainer and that he is ruining wrestling as we know it and killing the WWE and burying every other wrestler wrestler and trolling the fans or doing anything else that you think that he does, let me just tell you right now, you are a fool. You are stone cold 
fuck insane. I mean, shit, how many times in the last year have we heard this is awesome chants during a John Cena match? Quite a few times, okay? The guy's not a moron. And don't worry, I'm not going to give John Cena all the credit. You don't go out there and have a potential match of the year candidate all by yourself. It takes two guys to do that. And Cesaro put on a hell of a performance. I always knew he could. We all did. He's a great fucking worker. He's one of those guys, uh, you know, that a lot of us want to see pushed. So the fact that he got his opportunity uh, last week on SmackDown by defeating the WWE champion then he goes into raw and has you know a five-star match with john cena and damn near comes out on the winning end of that as well you have to be an ape to think that this has actually hurt cesaro in any way his stock rose after that match it amazed me how many people were facebooking me and tweeting me saying yeah that match was really good but the wwe really dropped the ball not having cesaro win that he should have won that match are you fucking crazy you want to give him that moment and that type of victory for free on raw fuck that if they're just starting to think about finally utilizing Utilizing Cesaro to his potential and breaking up the real Americans and moving him on, you don't have him beat the fucking face of the company the first goddamn week of the push. Get him over a little bit first. That's what that match was designed to do. He was able to defeat Randy Orton because that's the storyline. Randy Orton's losing to everybody right now. Then he goes into Raw and faces John Cena, the other face of the WWE, and damn near beats him, puts on a hell of a match, and John Cena put all of his shit over. John Cena took a couple of those devastating uppercuts. He got swung which I couldn't believe. I didn't think Cesaro was even going to be allowed to swing John Cena. But both of those guys, not just Cesaro, had some pretty good moments in that match. They both had a few interesting moves. You know, John Cena showed that, you know, when he wants to go and when he's in there with the right guy, that he can go. And some of the shit Cesaro was doing was amazing. I cannot believe how he superplexed John Cena from outside of the ring. You know, instead of John Cena sitting on the top rope and Cesaro climbing up there with him and suplexing him off, John Cena is standing on the outside of the ropes on the apron Cesaro climbs up to the second rope and still is able to lift him up and suplex him into the ring. Fucking unbelievable. And Cesaro's counter to the AA was fucking awesome. Did you see that? The way he just flipped out of it? You know, Cesaro knows what he's fucking doing. And it really got me thinking about CM Punk. You know, I still stand behind everything I said about him. You know, I understand completely why he would want to walk out. I'm completely 50-50 split on the whole situation. But there comes a time when you have to realize that that motherfucker is gone. We have got to move on. What sense does it make to go to a show and chant for a guy that does not want to be there entertaining you. It's the last place in the world that he wants to be. So we need to let it go. Fuck CM Punk. You know what? There's a spot open now. The top of the WWE is going to look very good, especially if the WWE comes through with some Daniel Bryan plans, if they don't flake out on Cesaro's push, and of course we all see what's happening to Roman Reigns right now. The new young stars are here, and they fucking mean business, and I hope they can keep up you know, this pace and this great work and these great matches. That way the WWE does take notice and says that, hey, these guys can easily be you know, the next face of the company if they're properly marketed and properly pushed, period. And I don't even want to go too crazy over the Cesaro-John Cena match, because everything Cesaro did in the ring last night, I knew he was capable of doing. We all did. And just a couple of minutes ago, I also glanced at the SmackDown spoilers, and I think uh, Daniel Bryan and Cesaro had a match on SmackDown, and I can only imagine how good that match must have been. That could possibly be a WrestleMania main event next year or the year after or the year after, you know, provided these guys, you know, stay hungry and stay good and stay healthy. They seem like they have unlimited potential in the WWE's future, so I'm rooting for everybody, and I just think that on Monday Night Raw, you know, to have a caliber match like that, especially involving John Cena, people get so hung up in who wins and who loses. I was laughing on Twitter to everybody that was just praising the match. This is awesome. Best match I've ever seen. As soon as John Cena hits the three count, all of a sudden the match sucked. It wasn't as good as they thought. John Cena buried Cesaro. No. Cesaro having a match with John Cena on Raw is much better than Cesaro being in a tag team match with Jack Swagger against the fucking Los Matadors. There's a time in place to worry and get pissed off about wins and losses. Monday Night Raw was all about Cesaro going out there and proving who he was. I think Cesaro impressed the hell out of every fan watching at home. He impressed the hell out of WWE management. He definitely impressed the hell out of all of his peers. And most importantly, he impressed the hell out of John Cena. And size, strength, and agility-wise, Cesaro seems like he has it all. He seems like he's even more put together than Daniel Bryan. Neither one of them have the greatest charisma in the world, but I think 
think Cesaro looks better. He's a little bit bigger. And if anybody, if any indie guy is going to get some sort of a push in the WWE, I can almost see them pushing a guy like Cesaro more than a guy like Daniel Bryan. But fuck that. I don't want it to come down between a choice between the two. I want to have them both pushed. And throw fucking Roman Reigns in the mix too. Who the hell needs CM Punk? You don't want to be here? Fine. Fuck you. We don't want you either. We need to concentrate on the future. And I think we all saw a glimpse of the future in that Cesaro John Cena match from here. As fans, all we can do is hope that the WWE does this right. Because one of the worst things that the WWE does that pisses me off to no end is how they just don't follow through with things sometimes. So if they're serious about their company and they're serious about building stars, Cesaro is a guy that you have to give a chance to. And I think the match that we saw Monday night with John Cena was part of that chance because the match that he had with Randy Orton on SmackDown a couple days before was also fantastic. And I have no doubt that when we see SmackDown this Friday, the match he has with Daniel Bryan is going to be awesome as well. So Cesaro, I think, is turning a lot of heads in the WWE. Uh, He's getting noticed by WWE management, and I have a feeling that they have big plans for him, you know, leading into the next few months. You can't just automatically get pissed because because he didn't beat John Cena. He's not going to beat him in that situation. He's still in a fucking tag team. Wait till these two guys have a rematch at a pay-per-view. Then we can start saying, okay, now's the time for Cesaro to get a victory. I mean, everybody bitches and screams that John Cena's on top too much and he doesn't pass the torch. Well, who the fuck do you want him to pass the torch to? Until Daniel Bryan recently got hot, who else did you see in the WWE that would be worthy of carrying the flag and carrying the torch? Nobody. WWE now most recently sees a guy in Daniel Bryan that's about as over as anybody's ever been in the fucking company and they're probably going to have no choice but to do something with him. They got a lot of great up and coming young talent like we just saw with Cesaro, like Roman Reigns, Bray Wyatt, lots of other guys. If you're asking me, the WWE has fucked up a lot in 2015. I'll give everybody that. I even made a commentary about a month ago bitching them out for it. I think they fucked up the Royal Rumble. They fucked up almost everything that they've done so far, but I don't want to hear anybody complaining that it's the same old guys hogging all the spotlights. There is a lot of good young talent that is being developed right now. You can't just show up one week and be developed and you're here and you're put over one week, one match. You're a star now. It doesn't work that way. You got to give these guys some build. Nobody fucking understands that. They need instant gratification. They hate John Cena so bad that they just want him defeated, period, one week, one, two, three. Now, I'm not saying the WWE can't fuck it up because there was another match recently on Raw that reminded me of this match with Cesaro, and that was when Damian Sandow came in and cashed in his briefcase and had that great match with John Cena, came out on the losing end, and we all said that match might have made Sandow. But now the WWE doesn't seem like they care as much about Sandow as they did before. That has nothing to do with John Cena, and it has everything to do with the WWE's fucked up management. Whatever reason they have for not pushing Sandow anymore like they look like they were going to a few months ago, that's not John Cena's problem. That's a fucking internal management problem, and who knows what the fuck their reasonings are for that. So I will sit there and agree with anybody that says, hey, don't count your chickens before they hatch. The WWE can easily, you know, put the kibosh on any sort of Cesaro push whenever they want. You're right. They definitely can. And I would not rule that out at all, and as bad as it sounds, part of me wouldn't even be that surprised if Cesaro fucking works a pre-show at the next pay-per-view or fucking loses in two weeks on Raw to a mid-carder. I'm hoping that won't happen. I'm hoping the WWE will use their fucking heads here, and this is another guy that fans like. He's a heel who's being cheered. I'm curious uh, to see the match with Daniel Bryan on SmackDown and how the crowd reacts to him, because I think Cesaro was definitely the babyface in the John Cena match, so now that he's going up against Daniel Bryan, who's as over as shit, you know, I wonder if Cesaro might actually hear the boos. But most of the fans, regardless whether or not Cesaro is a heel or a face, they are cheering him, and they appreciate his work in the ring, as do I. I thought it was an amazing match. I was proud of both guys guys, and I really hope that this leads to big things for Cesaro, but that's all we can do is hope. You guys know as well as I do, it seems like the WWE just has their heads up their asses sometimes, so I hope they get their shit together and actually build these stars. Right now, Bray Wyatt, Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, Roman Reigns, those are four of the most over guys in the company right now. I dare say the most over guys in the company right now, and every single damn one of them can put on a match. Now, as far as Elimination Chamber goes, this Sunday, I'm not going to go through match-by-match predictions because I just really don't feel like doing Doing that this week, but the card that I have right now uh, is the Elimination Chamber match for the uh, World Heavyweight title. The Wyatt family versus The Shield, Batista versus Alberto Del Rio. Uh, I think they've recently added Big E versus Jack Swagger, and also the Usos are finally getting their title shot uh, against the New Age Outlaws. And there might be a pre show match and there might be a Diva match, but as far as the top matches go, 
uh, you know, the Elimination Chamber, where do I see that going? I just don't know. I've been thinking about the WrestleMania main event a lot. I actually think the best and most logical way to make the match a triple threat match would be to have Daniel Bryan win the title in the Elimination Chamber. Because at least that gives Randy Orton an end to the match. He can come out and say, hey, you took the title away from me. I got beat because I was wrestling five other fucking guys. It's not fair. I want my rematch, and I want it at WrestleMania 30. Put me in that match. And then you've got champion Daniel Bryan taking on two challengers uh, in Batista and Orton. That almost seems like the only way uh, that Daniel Bryan could get into the main event and for it to make sense. But as we get closer and closer to the pay-per-view and we see how everything is set up, I- I'm not sure if they're even going to do that. You know, I just, uh, I- I'm trying to think of a way that they could get Daniel Bryan into the main event if he comes up short at Elimination Chamber and they're able to put him in the main event at WrestleMania 30 in some sort of a triple threat match. Because if they don't do that, Daniel Bryan is probably going to face Triple H. And if he doesn't face Triple H, who the hell knows who he's going to face? So I guess at this point, I'm still picking Randy Orton to uh, win the Elimination Chamber uh, match and come out of that match as champion. As far as how that affects Daniel Bryan and where that leaves him, you know, I guess we'll find out a lot uh, next week on Raw. Also on Elimination Chamber, Batista is going to squash Alberto Del Rio. Don't you think it's funny that on Raw, this guy that they brought back that's been gone for four years, that they paid all sorts of money to, they made him win the Royal Rumble, he's going to main event WrestleMania 30. How long was he on Monday Night Raw for? 90 seconds, maybe less. He had one little backstage promo with Triple H uh, where Alberto Del Rio showed up and started bitching at him with a neck brace around his neck and Batista just pushed him and bullied him around and walked away. That was it. He didn't have a match. He didn't come out to the ring. Nothing. And I think I know why he didn't come out to the ring because the WWE did not want to hear the fans boo him. Well, guess what, WWE? The fans want to boo him, so you might want to turn this motherfucker heel one of these days. And I think they're eventually teasing that. Everything he's done so far uh, since he's been on Raw, they've been teasing something with him and Triple H. And you have to think they're not going to do all this if it's not going to be leading somewhere. But But these fans are not going to warm up to Batista. They don't want to. We don't want to. We don't really like him, and he's just much easier to boo. So let the fans boo him and make Batista a heel. He's better at it, just like Randy Orton is. But his match uh, at Elimination Chamber is pointless. He's going to go out there and just destroy Alberto Del Rio. Absolutely beat the piss out of him. Uh, And I'm curious to see how the fans are even going to react to that. I hope they just, you know, I hope they're quiet. I hope they're not going crazy trying to sabotage the match. I hope they're just quiet and bored and disinterested and they go get a hot dog or something just to let the WWE know that, you know, if you try to pull this shit at WrestleMania 30, you're going to be sorry. I'm happy for the Usos. It looks like they're finally getting their title shot. Uh, I don't want to complain because I'm happy that they're actually getting the shot. The Usos are by far my favorite tag team in the WWE and I really cannot wait until they finally become champions. But part of me kind of, you know, wanted to see them win it at WrestleMania because I think with such a milestone show like WrestleMania 30, I want to see a few old school things happen on the show like actual fucking belts being defended. I want to see the tag team titles defended on the show, not the pre-show. I also want to see the Intercontinental title defended on the show, not the pre-show. And, of course, you also have the Wyatts and the Shield. You know, this might be the match that's selling this pay-per-view because I expect this match to be great. The build-up, the shit they've done on Raw in the past couple of weeks between these two factions have been pretty good. Of course, we can all see the dissension in the Shield. You know, I'm expecting the Wyatts to go over here, but as far as who goes over, I really don't care. Uh, I just want to see a good match, and I have no doubt uh, that we're going to see that. The Wyatts and the Shield, uh, they're going to show us who the fucking future of the WWE really is. So, really, when you look at the card, there's only two matches really worth Uh, watching the pay-per-view for maybe three if the Usos are able to to win the tag team titles I would like to see that otherwise I'm looking forward to the Elimination Chamber match and just how the fucking thing is booked and how exactly they're going to get Randy out of that thing with the titles and of course you know uh, the six-man match between the Shield and the Wyatts uh, you know should you know steal the show so I've made arrangements to be home I'll be home Sunday night watching the pay-per-view live I'll be tweeting uh, all of my thoughts about it during the show uh, and I'm really excited for next week's Raw because this is where it's going to start not only only are we going to have the fallout from the Elimination Chamber, but Raw is just fucking stacked. I mean, everybody is coming back for this fucking thing, including Hogan and The Undertaker. We'll probably get another Hall of Fame announcement. Unfortunately, we did not get a Hall of Fame announcement last Monday night on Raw. Uh, rumors have been going on everywhere that Scott Hall is likely going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, and I say fuck yes. He's clean, he's sober, I'm hoping it'll last for the rest of his life, but it might not, so as long as he's clean and straight, get him up on that podium now and have him make a speech while he still can. He more than 
than deserves to be in the WWE Hall of Fame, and I think it would be awesome, especially since Jake Roberts is getting inducted. You know, uh, and I mentioned DDP could be inducted as well, but I actually think DDP might induct Jake, so that would make it hard to put DDP in the Hall of Fame as well. But at least if you had Scott Hall and Jake Roberts both being inducted, DDP could just come along for the ride as their fucking chaperone. I also don't really expect Sting. It doesn't seem like uh, some of the things I've read that Sting is really high on WWE's priority list right now. I'm sure that'll change in upcoming months, and I would love for next year... Uh, WrestleMania 31 to have like a WCW themed uh, Hall of Fame because that would be the best year to put Sting in uh, to put Diamond Dallas Page in to put Goldberg in but as far as this year goes if the Scott Hall rumors are true that makes me incredibly happy we never thought we were going to see a happy ending uh, in the Scott Hall situation and we and we still might you know guys can relapse guys can fuck up again I'm not saying uh, that everything is fine with Scott Hall because once you're an addict to that level you are never cured but as long as Scott Hall stays with it and stays positive and you know and just realizes you know the importance of his life and how much life really is worth living uh you know uh, this has a chance to be a really really happy ending where so many times in wrestling we don't get happy endings so to be able to see jake roberts and scott hall two guys that have been on our death list being on the hall of fame in the same year being inducted you know and enshrined in the hall of fame and being recognized uh for all their accomplishments or is something that honestly i wasn't sure if we were ever going to be able to see because those guys would either be number one two fucked up to ever get inducted in the Hall of Fame or number two, dead. Well, I wanted this commentary to be short because I don't have a whole hell of a lot of time tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, start editing it, and uh, I'm going to get out of here. You guys take care. Have a great week. Enjoy the pay-per-view this Sunday. Like I said, I'll be up online tweeting. You can chat with me, Facebook, Twitter, whatever the fuck. I will be doing the same this Monday night for Raw. I will be glued to my computer watching this show take place and go down, and I cannot wait till we finally, in one week's time, have a little bit of an idea what we're looking at for WrestleMania 30 going into New Orleans. So WWE, good luck. Think about what you're doing. Doing, listen to the fans and don't do anything stupid. For the rest of you, I will catch you in a week's time as the road to WrestleMania 30 officially begins. Until then, peace.